sin is still the blood that cleanses within. our internet audience to our evening service tonight glad you could join us uh, we're going to have prayer and then brother Jared's going to lead us in a congregational and we certainly do hope that you'll follow along with the songs and with the preaching if you have your Bibles go ahead and get those out and ready for service tonight let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer and then brother Jared's going to lead us in a song our gracious father thank you and bless you for being so kind to us you you are faithful even when we are faithless and our faith is just as small as a grain of mustard seed, you still move mountains. We're thankful that you loved us enough to send Jesus to die for us. Thank you for the empty tomb. Thank you for the old rugged cross. And thank you for the hope of heaven. Lord, we pray for those who might be sick in our church family. We pray for those who have lost jobs and need a job. We pray for those who may be uh, foreseeing foreclosure. We thank you, Lord, for those who have recently uh, been awarded jobs and gotten things settled in their lives. And we pray for our president. We pray for our national leaders. We pray for the upcoming election that your will would be done. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for our missionaries around the world that we support and those maybe we don't know personally, but they're doing the work of God. And we pray, Lord, that lost people will come to find you as Savior before your soon return. And, Lord, we ask that you would uh, bless those who work in our hospitals, medical offices, those who are uh, serving us as policemen and officers. Give them protection and security. And, Lord, we ask that you bless our, uh, our folks who uh, are work on the ambulances and emergency people. God, we just need your blessing. We need you. Now, bless this service tonight that you'd get the glory. And we're going to thank you for all that you do and ask for your continued grace in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody that's here tonight, grab your hymn book, turn to page number 130, 130, I never shall forget the day. Go ahead and stand and sing with us this evening. If you're there at your house, make sure you know, if you know the song, sing with us there. Stand up from your couch or wherever you're sitting, stretch your legs and sing with us there on the first verse. Long years ago, when out in sin, I had no hope, no peace within. Down on my knees in agony, I prayed to Jesus and he gladly set me free. I never shall forget the day when all of the burdens of my soul were rolled away. It made me happy, glad, and free. I'm singing, shouting for he's everything to me. Now I can feel 
him by my side my feeble steps he comes to God when trials come he comforts me through faith in him or sin I'll have the victory I never shall forget the day when all the burdens of my soul were rolled away it made me happy glad and free i'm singing shouting for he's everything to me oh sinner come to jesus now at his dear feet just humbly bow confess to him your every sin he'll save and cleanse you give you peace and joy within i never shall forget the day when all of the burdens of my soul were rolled away it made me happy glad and free i'm singing shouting for he's everything to me I was so ashamed for all the wrongs I'd done, and I knew I had to pay. I was bound to face hell's flames. I'd be there today, my friends, but by the blood, but for the blood shed on It's filthy rags and that's all I'd ever be But for the blood that cleansed and set me free And even now I get so low You know the devil, he lets me know I'm so undeserving I'm unworthy of God's love and oh yes, I know it's true, but here I am with the chosen few. I can stand here today, yes, I'm saved, but by the blood, but for the blood, shed on Calvary's tree, but for the blood, there be no hope for you. is filthy rags and that's all i'd ever be but for the blood that cleansed and set me free but for the blood shed on calvary's tree but for the blood there'd be no hope for you is filthy rags and that's all i'd ever be but for the blood that cleansed and set me free but for the blood that 
cleanse and set me free. And my 
says love will be my end I could spend forever trying to tell you everything he is all oh, but the best way I can say it is this God's been good That my trials only come to make me strong And it's been through it all Yes, through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus And I've learned to trust in God It's been through it all When he let me know that I was his own So I'll thank God for the mountains And I'll thank him for the valleys And I'll thank him for every storm that he's brought me through If I never had a problem How would I know my God can solve I wouldn't know what faith in his word could do And it's been through it all Yes, through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus And I've learned to trust in God It's been through it all There's been times that I felt so all alone Oh, 
Oh, but in my lonely hours, those precious lonely hours, that's when he let me know that I was his own. So I thank God for the mountains, and I'll thank him for the valleys, and I'll thank him for every storm that he's brought me through. If I never had a problem, how would I know my God can solve them? I wouldn't know what faith in his word could do and it's been through it all yes through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus and I've learned to trust in God it's been through it all yes through it all I've learned to Trust in Jesus, and I've learned to trust in God. It's been through it all, yes, through it all. I've learned to depend upon His Word. If you asked me, are there reasons I shouldn't be saved? I'd say there's plenty. If you asked me, have there been times he shouldn't have heard me pray? I'd say there's plenty. And if you ask me, have there been times I've walked away and let temptation lead me astray? If you're asking, then I'd have to say there's plenty. Have I been through any valleys? I'd say there's been plenty. And if you ask me, have I been through any hard times? I'd have to say there's been plenty. And if you ask me, have I had friends 
Washington family walk off and betray me if you're asking then I'd have to say there's plenty but there's been plenty of times he's picked me up and wiped my tears away and there's been plenty of times he gently reminds me my sins have been washed away He's picked me up and wiped my tears away. And there's been plenty of times he's gently reminds me my sins have been washed away. Thank you for the good music tonight. Appreciate that. Thank you, folks, for using your talents for the Lord. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, we have several preacher men in our church. One of the young men, Brother Justin Poitras, is here with us tonight. I've asked him to come and preach God's Word for us. Those of you watching by Facebook, you'll recognize this man as part of our church family here. We appreciate him. And uh, you just open your Bibles and get ready for God to bring you something from His Word. Justin Portress. There we go. Can y'all hear me? Am I on? All right. Good evening, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm used to a big crowd shooting back at me, but... You got that tonight. I uh, got my clock up here again, so I won't be too long, hopefully, this time. Um, everybody can take their Bibles, turn to 1 Kings chapter number 17. 1 Kings chapter number 17. Got a topic that I want to talk about tonight. God gave me a little over a month ago. 1 Kings chapter number 17. While y'all turn there, I'm going to go ahead and start reading in verse... Verse, no, verse number 10, we'll start. So he arose and went to Zephrathath, and when he had came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, and that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it to me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, 
And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'd put the words that you'd have me to say into my mouth tonight, God. Lord, with all that's happened around the church, what's happening in our country, Lord, I pray that you just give us a touch, Lord, of your spirit, God. Give us a little bit of strength, Lord. Give us a little bit of encouragement, Lord. Give us a little bit of that anointing from on high, Father God. I pray, Lord, that you'd bless this message. Bless the words that I speak, Lord. Bless the people's hearts, Lord. I pray that somebody will take something from, take something from it tonight, God, and, and may it help them in their daily walk with you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. What I like to talk about tonight, many times in our lives, we find ourselves thin on our faith. Whether you've reached that point before, you will at some point, if you're a Christian, where your faith starts to dwindle and you start to question yourself. You question what you believe in yourself. You start to question God. You start to ask God why. And you get confused. You have no idea what's going on. And many times we don't know how to act or what to do when we start to lose our faith. A lot of times we start dabbling in things that we probably shouldn't be dabbling in. A lot of times we start doing a lot of things that we shouldn't be doing. A lot of times we start hanging out with people we probably shouldn't be hanging out with. We make decisions we probably shouldn't be making. What I wanna talk about tonight is being faithful with little faith. When you're low on faith, when there ain't much left inside of you to keep going, when you ain't sure what you're running on, nothing but steams, continue to be faithful. I want to talk about being faithful on a little bit of faith. In this story, I want to look back real quick, uh, starting in verse number 10. And it says, so he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate, but to, to, the, to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, and that we may eat it and die. The first thing I'd like to talk about tonight is her position. This lady had reached a point where she had given up. She was done. She had, she had expended her resources. She was so exhausted that she had gave up on her child, that she was ready for her and her child to die. That's how far she was gone. That's what little faith she had left. She had nothing left. She was done with God. She was done with everything. She said, I'm throwing in the towel. We're going to eat, and me and my son, we're going to die. She had no more faith. She was running on little. And if you keep reading, well, you apply that to us, to our lives. A lot of times things happen to us. We go through situations. We lose people. We lose family. We lose friends. We lose a job. We don't get a promotion. Whatever the case may be, we're in debt. We can't, we can't keep up with our finances. Whatever it is, there's a point. There's something somewhere in your life, whether it be now or whether it's been in the past or whether it's in the future, that's going to drive you to a point where you're going to feel like you're running on nothing but fumes. There's, there's going to be something that comes to your life, something in your life that drives you to the point that you question and you're going to look up in the sky and say, God, are you even there? There's going to be a point in your life where you've given up on prayer. There's going to be a point in your life where you've given up on reading the Bible. There's going to be a point in your life where you're going to be like that woman and you're just going to wish you could go to the refrigerator and pull out your last meal, make that last sandwich, and just die. There's going to be those days where you just sit there and beg God to return. Lord, when are you coming back? Please take me. I'm sick of this world. There's going to be the times that's going to drive you to the all-time low. There's going to be times that your resources have been spent. There's going to be times where your mind and your emotions are so exhausted that you don't even want to put your next foot in front of the other. There's going to be times that you're so physically drained that you just want to lay in bed for the next week. What will you do in those times when you're running on little faith? 
What's our go-to? What's our, fi- what's our vice? Where do we find our strength at? What's our crutch that helps us keep going? We might should take a look at those and probably get rid of some of them. But let's look at what she did. Let's read, continue in verse number 13. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me there, thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me. And after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of wool fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat for many days. So in this passage of scripture, we find that this lady, she had reached the point so rock bottom of her life that she'd given up on her own child. She said, I am out here using the last bit of my energy just to pick up two sticks, Joseph, and to go crunch them up and put them in a pile and cook up my last meal for me and my son so me and my child can die after that. What a point of life that is. I don't have a child, but to give up on your own child, that's got to be, that's, that's, that's got to be all time low, Joseph. That's got to be all time, pastor. Giving up on her own child. But the man of God came. A man of God came and told her what to do. And she had a choice. She had a choice. She could have said no. The woman could have said no. And she could have accepted her fate, but she didn't. She did what the man of God said. And I can see her now. I, I, wish, I wish they would have put a little bit of her attitude in there. I wish they would have recorded what her emotions were, what her initial reaction were. So I'm going to insert my own little story here. I can see that woman now. She's walking back to her house. I'm going to die anyways. Might as well help somebody. I'm going to die anyways. I'm, she's out getting her in a barrel, scooping that last bit of, bit of meal out the bottom of the barrel. Psh, I'm going to come back, and there's magically more meal in my barrel. Sure, that's what God's going to do for me. Look what he's doing for me now. She goes over to a little, little cruise of oil and she starts pouring out that oil and, and she sees the last couple drips hitting the bottom of that vessel, the bottom of that bowl. The last couple drips is coming out. She says, sure, I'm going to set this back, go give him the meal. And there's magically going to be more in my vessel when I get back. Sure, that's what's going to happen. I can hear now. That's what my attitude would have been like. I mean, I'm sitting here accepting my fate. I'm here accepting that my child is about to die. I've given up on my son. And I think God's going to magic all of a sudden come now when I fill up this, when I use the last bit of my food. But she was faithful anyways. She had little faith, Joseph. She was done. She had done through in the towel. The towel was already on the ground. But she was still obedient to do what God commanded her to do. She was still obedient to do and take care of the man of God. She was still making sure that, the, that God's kingdom was furthered no matter what the cost. If it cost her child his last meal, she would still make sure that the kingdom of God moved forward. She took care of the man of God. She made sure that he was respected. She made sure that he, that he had what he needed. I'm just going to leave that there. But she was faithful on little faith. And in verse number 16, it says, And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. And that is what, that is the return of being faithful to God. She had given, she had, once, I can't stress this enough, she gave up on her child, y'all, on her son. That's like, it's like my mom giving up on me. My mom walking into my room saying, hey, son, I just want to let you know, some man on the street said he was a preacher. I gave him our last bit of food. You're not going to eat ever again. We're probably going to die. Uh, just figured I'd let you know that. But yeah, and turns around and walks out of my room. Some crazy man on the road asked, asked for our food. My mom gave it away. She had reached that point, right? And she was still faithful to do what God told her to do because she wanted to further the kingdom of God. And look what God did. 
Not only, not only what was she able to feed her and her family from there on out with what God kept reproducing, but because she chose to participate in furthering the kingdom of God, she also had the privilege of continuing to provide for the man of God. She was able to still give the man of God food. She was able to still give the man of God oil and keep him from going hungry. She, so because she chose, to, she chose God with the last bit of what she had. It was an investment and God returned and she was able to keep investing in the kingdom of God. And she was able to keep going for the kingdom of God. The story doesn't end there. We keep reading chapter, uh, verse number 17, and it says, And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick, and his sickness was so sore, and there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom, and she carried him up into a loft where he, where he abode, and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he was revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Now, just for a minute here, before I continue, I'd like to take a moment to pause and just swap perspectives and hop on over to Elijah real quick. Now, here we have a man, a man of God, a man who devoted his entire life to, uh, to ministry, to, to furthering God's kingdom, to be a prophet. Now, this man has been thrust through so much already. He'd been living by the river, living in caves and mountains, hiding. And now here he is. That just, just imagine, just imagine er, just earlier in the text being Elijah and you have a man. She's probably crying, picking up those, picking up two sticks on the ground. And there you are watching her as, as she's shedding tears for some reason. And, and, you, and you say, ma'am, will you please go fetch me a cup of water? I'm thirsty. And as she starts to walk away to do whatever you ask her to do. Can you give me some, some meal too? I'm kind of hungry. You got anything to eat? And she says, I was just picking up these two sticks here to, to go feed me and my son and to eat our last meal and die, for I have nothing left. And he said, that's fine. Do that afterwards, but go make me some cake first. Could you imagine the guilt that Elijah felt in his heart as he made that request? Can you imagine how hard his stomach probably turned for asking a lady who was about to die and he didn't let her last meal to make you something first? Just imagine that. So hungry. Your man had to be hungry to go that far. If a woman's dying about to eat her last meal, I'm going to take her to McDonald's and not ask her to give it to me. <laughs> right? So Elijah, Elijah's in desperate times. Elijah's, in, Elijah's calling for desperate measures. He's obviously having some issues. He's obviously starving. He's obviously on the verge of probably throwing in the towel himself to ask a lady and her child for their last meal. So as we, as we check out this passage of Scripture, Elijah's in desperate times. He's having to live at a widow's house with her son. That's, that's how desperate Elijah is. And if you read in this scripture, if you read in this scripture where he, he takes the son, he takes the son from her. And, and she, the woman says in verse 18, and she said unto Elijah, what have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? Now, 
Not only has he ate this woman's last meal, but now she's blaming him for her son dying, for her son passing away because of her sins, because she also felt guilt, because she also knew the life that she had lived was wrong, because she also knew that God judges those that are his children and stray from his word and do things that they shouldn't do. So she had that guilt sitting on her chest, and now Elijah's not only bearing the guilt of taking their last meal, but now she thinks that he is the one, the cause for, his, for her son dying and passing. And the child is brought up to the attic and, or, the, or the loft and, and is laid on, on his bed. And he cries out to God. And he says, O oh Lord my God, hast thou brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son? And skip down to the end of verse 21. It says, O oh Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. So you find here that before Elijah says, let the soul return unto the child, that he's distressed. Elijah's distressed. He says, God, what are you doing, man? I mean, you're going to kill this woman's child too? Like, I'm in trouble, she's in trouble, and now you're going to kill the kid. Elijah's distressed. He's running on fumes, guys. I mean, before, before this passage of Scripture, you read earlier uh, in verse number 16, and, and I, mean, I mean, chapter number 16, a little, little further back past that, you can find that Elijah's already having some issues. He's already on the run. He's already having troubles. He's starving. And now the woman blames him for son. He looks up to the sky and says, God, what are you doing? I've given my whole life to you. God, I've dedicated my ministry to you. I've dedicated everything I have to you. I'm starving for you. What are you doing? And God didn't, uh, according to scripture, it's not recorded that God gave him a reply before he said, oh Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. So here you find that Elijah, again, just like the woman, was obedient to keep further in the kingdom of God because he prayed. He, had, he, he, he reignited his faith a little bit. He stretched, I can see him now, he's stretching his body across that, across that child and praying three times, saying, God, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know, I don't know what your plan is here. I'm running on fumes right now. But if you can just bring this child back to this woman, I'd appreciate it. And, he, and the child lived. And the child revived. And the woman said, in the very, very last verse, the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in thy mouth, that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is true. Is truth. To kind of sum it up, and then I'm going to go back and touch on a couple of things. What what we want to look at here tonight is is when you when you when you're running on when you're running on little fumes, and you're still faithful, God will be faithful to you. As we can see here, not only what did the did the family and Elijah have food every single day. In the following consecutive days. Not only, not only did Elijah pray over the child and the child came back to life, but the woman found her faith again at the end. And she said, Because of what you just did, I know that the word of God in thy mouth. It's true. Her faith was reignited, y'all. Her faith came back to life. She said, my son just rose from the dead. I've had mildew every single day for a week. God must be real. So what do we do, Christians, church, when we're running on fumes? Right now, I think it's easy to say that some of us here, some of us on live stream, are running on fumes. I think it's quite easy to say that America right now is running on fumes. 
I think it's easy to say right now that probably some of our families, because of COVID and the way, financially, emotionally, everything, is we're running on fumes. But what are we to do when we run on fumes? I'll turn my Bible. You don't have to turn with me. You can. I'm going to go to 2 Timothy chapter number 3. Paul wrote this to Timothy. Starting in uh, verse number 15, chapter number 3, and it says, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I think what Paul was trying to tell Timothy here, if you read, if you read that whole chapter, starting in verse number three, it's, it's, talking about, it's talking about going through hard times, specifically to the church, because there's going to be a lot of people trying to start trouble. There's going to be a lot of people trying to tell lies. There's going to be a lot of people trying to stir issues, cause people to go to anger. It says, there shall be men who are lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, and so on and so on and so on. But it's talking about, uh, it's talking about people coming in the church and starting trouble, people who are false, people who aren't real Christians, people who put on a front face. And Paul said, Paul said, number 14, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And then it says, 15 and 16, the word of God. Stay in the word of God. Read. Stay in communication with the Lord. Stand still. Pray. Seek faith. Have faith. And man, I feel like a lot of times we paint this false illusion that faith is something that magically happens to us when we get saved. Faith is a choice. <clears throat> Having faith in something, it is, it is the, it is the, it is the uh, faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So what does that mean? That means if I'm waiting on Trevor to show up for dinner because he told me he was going to be there, I either choose to have faith in him or I choose not to have faith in him. When you're going through a hard time, Christians, when you don't know to turn right or left and there ain't nothing but fog around you and you are at the bottom of the pit, you have two choices. One, you can either choose to have faith in God or two, you can choose not to have faith in God. You can choose whether you want to open this Bible at least for an hour of every day, or you can choose to leave it sitting on the shelf. You can choose whether you want to get down on your knees and pray to God like Elijah did over that boy, or you can choose to say, no, he's dead, dig a grave and throw him in the hole. You have a choice. You have a choice. That woman had a choice of, did she want to go make Elijah, the crazy man on the street, telling her to give him an Get, telling him to give him her and her child's last meal. She had a choice whether she did that or whether she ate it herself. Faith is a choice. So, Christians, right now, right now, we have a choice. We have a choice. And we're either going to choose to continue the, the, and to, to continue to further the kingdom of God or we will choose to cower to the world. And we will choose to stand down and be silent. I know me. As for me and myself, I will stand. I will not be silent. I will not cower to the world. I will not listen to the world and its ways. If they try to threaten my freedoms and my, and my religion, I will have a foot on the ground, Brother Joseph. When the doors are open, I will be here in that sound room, in a pew, or on stage. 
If the door is open to serve God, I will take it. But how many times, church, do we find ourselves in those bottomless pits having run on little faith and we just throw in the towel? Or we find a vice. We find a, a little smoke smoke or a little drink drink just to carry us through. Or maybe we find us a, a, a little significant other that we put our faith in. Faith ain't meant to be in humans, guys. <laughs> faith ain't meant to be in your family. Faith ain't meant to be in nobody because anybody can turn your back. If you just keep your eyes focused, pointed, and walking towards Jesus, you will be fine. And God will take care of you. That lady gave up, was ready to, get, to, to let her own child die, but she chose to keep walking towards the, the kingdom of Jesus Christ. She chose to give her last meal to the man of God to maybe get him to the next place. <clears throat> so my question, my final point, my final point, turn back to where I was at, I didn't bookmark it. Even after the woman, after the woman had, had, had reached rock bottom, she had just given her last meal to Elijah. She let him stay there. And then her child dies. Her child passes away. I can, personally, I can only imagine how that felt. You, 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 you find it's like a roller coaster. You go down a little dip and you think it's the end. And then you get it to the top of the next hill and this hill just looks even deeper. And you ain't got nowhere to go but down. You know you're heading there. But what are you going to take with you? Her faith was rewarded by her child living and her fire was reignited. So my, Christian, my question to the church would be, in these times that we're in right now, with our present situation, with our own personal present situations going on, what will the church, the people who claim to be Christians, the people who say to stand on the word of God, the people who say, oh, I ain't worried about nothing I've got on my side, the people who say, oh, we'll pray for it, the people who, who claim to know the one and only, eternal, all-powerful, all-knowing God, what will those people do right now? What are we going to do, church? Are we going to cry? Are we, are we, are we going to whine? Or are we going to stand where, and do what God told us to do, no matter the cost? Ch church, this is a battleground. We get way too comfortable in, the, in this world, in this life that we live in. We put ourselves $400,000 in debt just trying to get a cause degree as if we're going to live here the rest of our lives. We put ourselves tons of thousands, thousands, thousands of dollars in debt just to have a brand new car that's probably going to die before you even get it paid off. So church... This world is temporary. This world is not your home. I don't know about y'all, but I'm just a visitor here, y'all. This life is just a blink of an eye in all of eternity. I am just a stranger passing through. My home is on the other side. I'm heading there. So I don't know about you, church, but for now, in this very temporal world we live in, I think I'll just stick with the good stuff. I think I'll take this book. I think I'll stay in it, and I think I'll just do what it says. I think I'll stay on my knees and listen to what God says and follow wherever he tells me to go. I think I'll find myself on an altar sometimes and repent of the sins I've committed against my God. I think I'll come to this altar and lift my needs up to him. The Bible says the cast your cares upon him for he careth for you. I think I'll stick to the old stuff. I think I'll stand behind my pastor and support his decision because it's his job to listen to God for this church, not mine. I think I'll keep doing what God has called me to do. That's right. What will the church of God do? I want to be like that church in California who's paying a $5,000 fine every week just to have service. Where's, where's the churches that'll do that? 
give up $5,000, take up an offering for $5,000 just so they can be in the house of God on Sunday. Half of us won't pay our tithes right now. I want to be like the pastor, like the preacher. I don't recall his name, but I read the article who said, I ain't afraid of COVID. If it's my time to go, it's my time to go. And he went out of preaching, and about, about a month later, he died from COVID. Hey, I'll tell you right now, if it's my time to go, it's my time to go. But I'm going to be exactly where God told me to be. And that should be all of our choices. That should be every Christian who says God is number one in my life, that I will depend on God for everything, that I will depend on God for my health, my financial stability, for, my, for everything that, 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 you, that you need. Those of us that say we depend on God for those things, where's your faith at? We should all be standing on this word. We should all be looking to God, not government not the mayor, not the president, not Joe Biden, not Donald Trump, not Roy Cooper, not Dan Forrest, not our parents, not our friends. We should all be looking at God. I'm going to tell you something right now. A mask ain't going to save you. If it's your time to go, it's your time to go. God is my number one hope, my number one source of strength, my number one thing in this life. I want to do exactly what he tells me to do, be exactly where he tells me to breathe, to be, breathe when he tells me to breathe. And when I die, I'm going to stand before him in my eternal home. Because this ain't my home. I'm, I'm looking forward to the day I get to go, Pastor Bruce. I tell you, I like to enjoy my journey on the way there, but that's my main goal. That's what I'm looking forward to. And I'm going to stand before God. And I want to hear out of his word, mouth, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I've kept the faith. I've finished my course. That's what I want to be able to say. That's what I want God to say to me. So church, I'm done. I told you I wouldn't be long. That's what God gave me. That's what I felt like he put on my heart. Make the right decision. Stand where God tells you to stand. Put your faith in him. Even when things feel hopeless, things seem too far gone. Keep your faith in God. Stay in church. Stay in the Bible. Stay behind your pastor. Support him. Love him. And we will all be fine in the end. Pastor, it's all you. Thank you, Brother Justin. Appreciate that. God's word is true. Through all that the lady went through, she obeyed, but somewhere in her heart, she couldn't help quite totally trust what she'd been told. But then, as uh, Brother Justin pointed out, she finally, at the end of that account, said, everything you've been saying is true, preacher. You were right. Perhaps you're at a point in your life where you're saying, God, I just don't know what to do, where we're going to turn next, how we're going to face this situation, what's going to happen in the world, in America, right here in our own community. Let's let God handle that. As easy as that is to say, it's tough to live. But Brother Justin, you were right. We're just going to trust God and do what he says. Let's pray. Good to have our audience by Facebook and Internet. We'll be saying uh, good night to you after the prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the love and the mercy that you've given us. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the empty tomb. Thank you for the hope of resurrection power. Thank you for the promise of your soon return. And Lord, we're saying come quickly, Lord. We want to see you. We want to see Jesus who died for us. Bless, heal help and do all the fantastic things that you're accustomed to doing in your grace and for your glory we'll ask it in jesus name amen